Hi everybody. Um, I am finally to the point where I can demonstrate the, the uh, new lead compensation system, which involves this external differential over here and a small gear train. That's attached to a, a shaft that I installed through the spindle box to carry the input from the lead compensation train to the other side. Uh, those of you that have been following along know the backstory, but uh, I just wanted to share this moment with you because uh, you can actually see it working. Uh, so I'm not going to energize the mill. All I'm going to do is disengage the table feed and then manually crank the table feed back and forth. And you can see the worm gear and the worm moving. Um, uh, as a result of the, the input from the lead compensation train. So anyway, here we go. We'll disconnect the table feed. And now, if you watch the, the worm gear, I'm, I'm manually advancing the table in the direction that I would normally produce gears. Stay in focus. Um, and you can see the worm gear down below that. You can see the bevel gears that are part of the, the um, index train that take the signal from the feed, uh, the table feed. And in, in the foreground right in here, you can see the, the jack shaft, the parallel shaft that I built to carry the input signal. Bring it back this way a little bit. So this is all lead compensation, no uh, index train input, and obviously the mill's not running. So anyway, that's that. I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited about this, and I'm ready to take it to the next step. Here I've re-engaged the uh, table feed, and you can see that, uh, that system there. This is the index train. That's exactly the same as it was before. Um, when I was experimenting with making gears. And here you can see the new differential and the little gear train that goes on the other side to drive the drum side of that differential. Uh, part of the experimenting I've done has been to uh, evaluate the effect of these uh, universal joints on the, the dynamics of the system. And I'm, uh, I'm a little surprised to say it's a lot more than I thought it was. Um, you can really detect the, um, if the angularity gets too high, you can even see it in the, in the motion of the worm gear, uh, which is obviously not gonna, not gonna work well. Um, so I'm gonna have to do some things here, I think. I'm either gonna have to reduce the angularity, uh, which probably means moving that center down or maybe putting a little auxiliary gear train in the front that I can move around depending on, uh, on what's needed. I'm a little disappointed by that, but, uh, you know, the, this is one of those uh, learnings that you come across. I'm not sure it's going to be a, a real big deal. I won't know until I start cutting gears again. But um, anyway, uh, we're kind of down to figuring out what to do about the main shaft and how to how to either connect that to the worm gear without any lash or uh, how to make a new uh, main shaft that goes from end to end, which I'm kind of hoping to avoid, but, uh, but we'll see. Well, I got so excited talking about what's coming next that I forgot to actually run the machine uh, so you can see it in operation. So that's the new differential in lead compensation mode, but honest to gosh, I'd have to do uh, I'd have to do time lapse for you to see that actually moving. But it is engaged and moving, uh, but it only moves at the very slow rate that I've got the set uh, the table set at. And uh, there you can see the, the lead compensation train, but that's not uh, it's not actually an action shot. All I'd lack now is a spindle. 
Anyway, that's just a short update for now. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.